Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to find out the number of water molecules in a given volume. So in this question, we can see the tank right here, which is um, a rectangular tank. And, um, and we have the dimension, we have the length, we have the width, and we have the height of the tank. And the question asks, how many water molecules are in the, are in the, uh, in the tank? Now, before we do any type of calculation, first we have to have a concept of guesstimating how many molecules are there so that we kind of have a good sense of what we should expect for our final answer. Now, we understand that a single molecule is a very, very tiny little uh, particle. So when we think about how many water molecules are actually in a tank, that is four centimeters length, uh, length for, uh, for the length and the width, and two meters for the height, we should expect a very, very big number. And this is what we would, uh, we would expect for our final answer. So now, let's look at the question. Many students would think that this type of question is so difficult and they don't know where to go uh, as they move along the calculation. So what I want you to do is to really think through the process and follow me so that you understand what is the uh, what, what what are the concept that uh, that is that are required to lead you through the uh, calculations? So first, we can very easily calculate the volume of the of the of the tank. So let's do that first. So the volume, I'm just I'm going to just uh, do it here is equal to 4 meters times 4 meters times 2 meters. Now for those who are not used to writing units, uh, I would say I would tell I would say this to you that writing units is extremely important when we do this type of calculations and this is something that you should really do no matter it is in chemistry, in physics, in math, you should have this habit of writing units. So, we should have 32 cubic meters. Now, just in case that you do not you do not understand why it is meter cube, think about this meter just like a just like any uh, variable that you see in your math class, just like an x. So when you have x times x times x, so x multiplies itself by 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 itself by three times, you have x cube. And in this case, it is, same, it is the same thing. We have like terms, meters, and it is going to multiply itself for three times. So at the end, we should have cubic meters. Now, how are we going to connect the volume to the number of molecules? This seems to be the most difficult thinking part for many of the students. So let's do a map here. Okay, there are actually a couple ways to think about this and uh, I'm going to first tell you how to think it in a, uh, in a forward direction. So now we have the volume and the first thing that we will ask ourselves is that is there any direct relationship between the volume and the number of molecules? Okay, based on our knowledge, based on the question. Now, the question just asks you how many water molecules in a tank. It doesn't really give you any other information. So, we don't really have any clue about the direct relationship between the volume and the number of molecules. Now, think about any other uh, thing related to water molecule or water. We may have the molar mass of water, which is 18 grams per mole. Uh, that is the connection between mass and the quantity in moles, so it's not volume to the number of molecules, so it doesn't really work. Uh, we have density of water, which is one gram per milliliter, which is the connection uh, between the uh, mass and the volume. It is not what we expect here. But now, we could make these, those indirect relationships to help us to approach to the final uh, destination or we can say that it we can do the dimension analysis we analyze the dimension at the very beginning it is the dimension of volume 
and how are we going to change the dimension from volume and through our dimensions and then to the number of molecules. So, so we can do this. Uh, we, I mentioned about the molar mass and the, uh, the density. And based on these two uh, quantities, I mentioned the density which has the dimension of volume because density is mass over volume. So let's see if that quantity can help us to achieve anything. So I'm going to use density and I'm going to use a small letter D to represent that. And with the use of density, we can convert from the um, dimension of volume to the dimension of mass. Okay? So, with the density, we are able to find out the number of uh, the mass of the water molecules. Now, this is still not what we want, but if you think about the molar mass, molar mass involves the dimensions of mass and quantity. And those two, we, and we can use the molar mass to convert mass to some kind of quantity in terms of moles. So we can do this. We can use the uh, molar mass, and I'm going to use the big M to stand for the molar mass. Uh, we can find out the number of moles uh, and to, uh, of molecules, of water molecules. Now, we still have a gap right here. Is there anything that we can do to fill this, this gap? Remember that you learn about what one mole is. One mole is just a number. Okay, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, some students may have this misconception saying that, oh, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. That's not true. It's only true if you say one mole of molecules is equal to one mole of uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of molecules. One mole is simply a number. Okay. And that's, that number is called the Avogadro number. So we can use the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd right here. And then we can get to the number of molecules. Okay, so you may use this method to guide you through the thinking. And then you start for calculation. So let's do that. So we have the volume. Um, the density of water is one gram per mil. Now, here we see a problem. The problem we see here is that, well, we have the volume in the units of cubic meters, but in the density, we have the units of mil, or we can use uh, cubic, cent uh, cubic centimeter. Okay, they are both uh, equivalent to each other. So, how are we going to do that? So, first, we have to change units so that we can help them to communicate. So we have to change the cubic meters to uh, cubic centimeters. So what we're what we going to do is this. Okay. Now, one of the major uh, mistakes that many students will commit is this. Some students would write this is uh, that. Okay? Now, you have to understand that your relationship must be valid when you write a conversion factor. Is this relationship valid? Well, let's check. If you have, let's just say that if you have a perfect cube that has one meter on each side of the cube, okay, and the length is one meter, and let's just say you don't want to express in meter, let's say you want to change it to 100 centimeter, which is which they are the same. And then you count and then you calculate the volume of the uh, of the cube by centimeters, uh, cubic centimeters. Then you realize that okay, it will be 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters, which would give you eventually 10 to the 6 power centimeters cube. So this is how you prove yourself that this is not correct and this is correct. Okay, so let's move on. So now we have the, uh, we have the uh, volume in cubic centimeters. Okay, 
And uh, one thing I will also suggest you to do is that whenever we carry on the next step of the calculation, let's develop some checkpoints and to check if you know what you're doing. So at this point, if I start, if I stop the calculation at this point, what we are finding out is the volume of the tank in cubic centimeter. Okay? This is what we are finding if we stop right here. And then we move on. And we are going to use the density, which is one gram per cubic centimeter. And uh, now, the other thing is this density is only true for water. It is only true for water. If you say this oil, it will be a different number. So make sure that to better annotate your conversion factor, we are all going to do this. One gram of water is to one cubic centimeter of water. So that you know and you acknowledge the fact that this density is only applicable to water. And let's move on. So in the, in, at this point, we have the mass of water in, um, in grams, okay? And then next, we are going to find out the number of moles of water molecules, and we are going to use the molar mass, okay? And uh, we are going to do one mole of water over one, uh, 18 grams of water, okay? And uh, now, and here, again, make sure you can, you are able to make a statement to validate your conversion factor. One mole of water is equal to, uh, is, is, uh, is 18 grams of water, okay? So, um, don't make careless mistake at this point. And let me erase this part. And then, let's move forward. So we can multiply, and at this point, we have the number of moles of water molecule, okay? And then at the very end, we would like to find out the actual number of water molecules. So we do one mole of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? And again, uh, you have the option of writing water or not writing, writing the water because one mole is just a number. You don't have to write any nouns or uh, descriptive words uh, behind uh, after the, uh, these two numbers. So if you want to write water, then you just want to make sure that you do water uh, or molecules on both the numerator and the denominator. And at the end, we will try to calculate the answer and let me uh, use my calculator and see what it is the what's the answer. So the answer for this question is going to be one point one point one times ten to the thirtieth. Okay, water molecules. Okay, so there is uh, so in the tank there's a total of this amount of water molecules in the tank. So, what I would like you to understand in this uh, tutorial is that when you have to connect dimensions of two distant uh, dimensions, I would like you to be able to think of, from, think of some quantities that can help you to relate. Now, it takes practice to develop those kind of connections, but you have to be creative, you have to think, and I would suggest that you think before you actually pick up a pencil and to actually do the math because once you pick up a pencil you try to force yourself to write something down and that is not really a good thing to do because you don't want to force yourself to write something that's nonsense you want to write something that makes sense and you want to write something that is correct and it will help you to get the correct answer so I hope this tutorial will help you uh, to go through uh, this type of uh, difficult problems